We have a very special project that we're doing in the home of a former client on Woodworking with West this week. We're going to do a two-part video doing a mantle and floating shelves on a new fireplace wall in their home. Our mantle will be a box beam style mantle and be hanging from a French cleat. We're going to show you all the steps that we go through and that's going to be our first video. Our second part will be the floating shelves and how we install those. Follow along with us on these two videos and show how we make this wall come alive. Let's get started. We're getting ready to get started on part one of our two-part video. The first part we're going to be doing is our mantle. You can see we've put some blue tape on the wall to define our measurements. This is going to be a box beam style mantle and we'll be hanging it with a French cleat. But first, the shop and let's build our mantle. We're at the shop now ready to get started building our box beam mantle. Remember we talked about the fact that we had taken our measurements and, and determined our measurements at the job site. The, the size of our mantle is going to be 10 inches high, 7 inches deep, and 96 inches long. So it's quite a large mantle. And we've cut some of our pieces here getting ready to go. This is the face of our mantle right here. It's going to be, this is all out of riff cut white oak. And here's our face piece mantle. This is our side right here. This is the side it's going to be, and I'm going to show you how we did that. This is the top and bottom piece and some braces. We're going to be putting a French cleat in, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. But the construction that we're going to use, I'm going to show you the construction we're going to use on our face piece and our side pieces. We've already cut the angles and done the rabbit joints just because of the fact that as large as it was, I needed to have some help cutting the angles. The, the 45 degree can't be cut on a chop saw, it's too big, so it had to be done on a table saw. And the table saw um, doesn't extend long enough to hang that out, so I had to do it. But we're going to have our top and bottom rabbited into our face and side pieces. We're going to use a riff cut white oak veneer plywood and we're going to rabbit it in. Let me get up close to our, our video so that you can see how the rabbit joint works. That is how we're putting our top and bottom in. There's going to be a top and a bottom piece. The face piece will all be sided, uh, solid. We're going to do it in such a way that we have very few, if not any, nails in the face pieces of our construction so that we have a nice clean face. But let's get started by putting some of the brace pieces together. These are some braces that I made that'll go between the top and bottom to space our top and bottom piece together. That's the first thing we'll do. Let's just get started and watch as we go through and we'll put this mantle together and make a beautiful mantle. The first thing that we are going to be doing is putting some bracing pieces in between our top and our bottom. This is our top and bottom. Um, like I say, we're using a veneer plywood, a, a rift cut white oak veneer plywood. So that is going to be our top and our bottom piece. This is the inside. This is our good rift cut veneer piece. Let's turn this one over and I'll kind of show you how we're doing this. This piece is going to fit here on our plywood and then this other one down at the other end and then we have a couple of uh, mid spacers and that's going to space our top and bottom apart like that now we also have because of our rabbit joint we have to allow some of the plywood to be extending beyond our spacers and I made me a little half inch pine spacer and we're going to space our, our support piece back a half inch. And it's going to be just like this. And then we're going to nail from the top and the bottom. Just watch as I go through. I'm going to put a little glue on here. Put my spacer piece in here. Nail some glue down. Go back and do the other thing on the other side. Put in my mid spacers. I'm going to set that down there and get ready to go on this. And we'll assemble this piece by piece and see what happens. 
Now, unfortunately, you, uh, I'm, I'm trying to work a little backwards because I have to see what I'm doing. But you will be able to follow along and see how it goes as it comes together. There's the glue on my bracket. There's my spacer piece. That spacer piece is a half inch thick and we're going to make it flush with the back side of our top and bottom. Right there. And we're using 18 gauge, inch and a half nails to nail our spacer piece in. Okay, so that's the way the spacer piece is going to be nailed in. There'll be one at the other end, top and bottom. Well, we'll go ahead and get those done. These center spacer pieces are just to make sure that we have the right distance between our top and bottom piece before we put our ends on. We're going to go ahead and get this completely built and then we'll skin the outside edge with our solid material to make our mantle face. We're now getting ready to put the face. We'll start with the ends and then put the face piece on last. You can see now where our rabbit joint comes into play. This piece is going to fit here just like this. We'll pound that in. We'll glue and give a couple of small nails there and get this all put into place. But we're going to glue it and nail it. So let me get that off of there. Oh, I got a nice tight fit. I can't even get it off. There we go. I am going to turn this on its back so that my workbench helps me keep the back flush. And that allows me to also attach from top to bottom as I'm working. Let's just watch as we go through. Let's put a little glue on our rabbit joint. bench will help us keep that flush. So that we don't have to use any nails on this, I'm going to turn this up so you can see this. We're going to put a couple of screws through our bracing. from the inside to hold our ends on and then we won't have any nails on the outside of our facing again. Now let's take a look at that end. See, there's our end, nice and beautiful, flush with the back. We've glued our joint. We'll putty and sand this edge when we get all done, but a nice clean face. We're going to do this to the other side, then we're going to get ready to put the face on. We're getting ready now to put our face piece on. We have our two ends put on. One of the things we want to do is check and make our, sure that our measurements are correct so that when we put our face piece on, because of how tight it fits, we don't want to be having to take that off and make any adjustments. According to our tape measure, we're 95 and 13 sixteenths for our length of our box and our face should be the same and it is. All right. We're going to uh, get ready, glue it up and nail it on. We'll put some good glue on our miter. We want to have good glue on that and down the face of our plywood top and bottom 
that rabbit joint hides our plywood face, our plywood end. So that's why we were able to use plywood for the top and bottom and not have to worry about using solid wood because our rabbit joint allowed us that opportunity to use some plywood to make our construction a little easier and a little more lightweight. This is going to be a heavy mantle because of its size and the fact that we can save a couple of pounds on the weight is a good thing. Okay, and we're going to have our rubber hammer at the ready and get ready to put it in. This is this is the meat and potatoes part of the mantle, putting this face in. Wow, that's almost like I knew what I was doing. It scared even me. We're now going to secure our face that we just put on by putting some nails, 18 gauge, inch and a half nails, through the top and bottom into the rabbit that we cut on the back side of our face. Again, making sure that our face is nice and clean. This mantle will be mounted at face height and so to have a nice clean face is going to be a beautiful part of this mantle. We're going to install the French cleat pieces but I wanted to show you what a French cleat was for those who don't know. A French cleat is just a 45 degree cut put on two pieces of wood and they're mounted so that the uh, angles oppose each other and as you put your hang your uh, cabinet or your mantle in this case as you put it in there and you push down on it the opposing angles pull it tighter to the wall so the actual uh, pressure down with the weight of your uh, project that you're hanging actually pulls it closer to the wall as these two opposing angles uh, hold the project up and pull it tight to the wall. And that's how we're going to hang our mantle. In installing our French cleat, we're going to and glue it and nail it in flush with the back side of our mantle that goes against the wall so that it pulls it tight against the wall. We're going to give it plenty of glue and a few nails. And that will be enough to secure our French cleat. You got to make sure that you get it flush or even just a little bit less because you don't want it to push it away from the wall but to pull it toward the wall. Just like that. We're all put together now. I've puttied my seams and my nail holes and as you can see there's no nails on the face of our mantle that's going to be so beautiful and our nails on the top and, and seams on the top will disappear. Now we're going to go through and sand it all down all nice and smooth and put some routes on it but I won't make you watch me sand but I'll get it all sanded up and we'll come back. Okay we're all done sanding. We're ready now to put the route around the edges. We're going to do a quarter inch round over on all the corners and edges. And then we're going to do a final sand. Our initial sand was 80 grit. Then we just finished sanding 120. And then after the route, we'll sand 150 for our final sand. I wanted to point out one thing. When I showed you the putty, I showed that I had puttied all my seams. When I made my rabbit joint, I made my rabbit joint just a hair larger than the three quarter inch thickness of my plywood so that I never had my plywood stand up above my rabbit so that when I sanded, I sanded down to my plywood. That just saves so that you don't have a sand through. Um, it's just a, a way of securing 
your plywood underneath the rabbet, making sure that you don't have a, a rough edge showing. Okay, all sanded up, ready for the paint shop. See you there. For the stain that we're using today, we're using a Sherwood wiping stain from Sherwood Williams mixed to a custom color for our client. And we're just going to apply with a staining sponge and wipe with paper towels, just like I always do when I do my staining. So just watch, let's get started. And this is a beautiful kind of a brownish gray color. And it looks wonderful on this mantle, or on this type of uh, rift cut white oak. Gives it a nice warm color, but still allows the grain to show through on that beautiful rift cut white oak. This is a big piece and we'll stain a section at a time. And like the sanding, I won't make you watch me stain the whole thing. Just know that this is the way I do it. And I like to make sure that I rub my stain in a circular motion, drive it into the grain, bring out all the beauty of that grain. Get that stain down in there. This is my favorite part of the project, is to stain it and watch that beautiful, beautiful grain come up. Sanding is a very important part of your project. How good your sanding is, is how good your finish is. Always remember that, so make sure you get your finish, your sanding done correctly. Okay, we'll come back when we're all done. Okay, we're all done with the stain. It looks beautiful. We're going to let it dry according to the manufacturer specifications. We have to let our stain dry one hour, and we're going to do that, and then we're going to give it clear top coats and it'll be ready to install. So watch us lacquer and then we'll show you install. back at our client's home. Our mantle is complete. We sprayed the final coat of lacquer. It's had time to dry. We're really re getting ready to install it now. Because of the thickness of our tile face on our fireplace construction, we have made a small spacer board to bring our French clean piece to the proper depth. We'll get this all mounted, bring our mantle in and set it down. One thing we need to make sure is that our piece is completely level because if it's level our mantle will be level so let's get started and go there okay our hanging cleat is secure and level Let's put the mantle on and see what happens. We're going to tighten it up a little bit, make it all look just perfect and get it all in place where it's supposed to be. Next time we're going to be doing our floating shelves and we're going to see you then on Woodworking with Wes.